Good evening, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day and all the many blessings, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you just help me to preach your word, uh, speak to hearts as only you can. I pray, Lord, that you'd save the sinner. I pray, Lord, that you'd draw back the backslider and that you'd encourage the saint through your word. We pray this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter number 11. Matthew chapter number 11. We're going to look at verse number 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now Jesus had just finished uh, condemning cities which saw his mighty works and yet did not repent. And now he comes here in Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30 and he issues a new invitation to individuals. Notice the message, verse number 28 says, Come unto me all. It's for all. It's for everyone. Now we see in verse 28, number 1, we see the call of salvation. It says, come unto me, this is the invitation of all who are lost, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, they're burdened down with sin, and the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6 verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. So sin leads to death and destruction. While the religious leaders were telling people to do things, uh, putting the hard yoke of the, lo uh, of the law on people, Jesus was saying, come unto me. This speaks of putting your faith and trust in him. Now Galatians 2.16 says this, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now, what was the promise given here if we come unto him? He says, I will give you rest. This refers to the salvation of the sinner. This rest is peace with God. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ was punished for our sins so that we could have peace. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 53, verse number 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. That chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, what does chastisement of our peace mean? His punishment that obtained peace for us. He died on the cross and suffered and shed his precious blood for us. So we have the call of salvation in verse number 28. Now I want you to see the personal sanctification of the believer in verse number 29. He says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. We are to learn in discipleship and serve serve in yoke with the Lord. Now, what is the result of taking his yoke upon us and learning of him? Notice he says, ye shall find rest for your souls. The rest found here is different from the rest that was in the previous verse. Now, when we come to Christ by faith for salvation, he gives us rest. We have peace with God. Now, when we take his yoke and learn of him, we have the deeper rest of surrender and obedience. Now we have the peace of God. John 14, 27 says this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now I want you to go to the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter number 4, 
Philippians chapter number 4. Philippians chapter number 4. And we're going to look here at a few verses. Let's start in verse number 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request... Now here, you'll see that he's saying that we need that peace in verse number 7. And the peace of God, which patheth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So here he's saying that if in verse number 6 that we're to be careful for nothing, be prayerful in everything, and be thankful for anything. By doing that, then we can have the peace of God which passeth all understanding and shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, next verse, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good, report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And notice what it says next. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So that promise is made to us that the God of peace shall be with us. Now, when we go back to our text, verse number 30, Verse number 30, it says, For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now this word easy here means well-fitting. It is tailored for each individual. And so it fits our needs and our wants. He takes care of us. That burden is light. We don't have the, the big burden on us. The Bible says in, in 1 John chapter 5, verse number 3, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous. They're not burdensome. Why? Because we have the Spirit of God in us. Ephesians 1.13 says this, In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed you were sealed, with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is the one who guides us in all truth. Only God can give us true peace. Luke chapter 7. The penitent woman there, who wept at Jesus' feet, found peace. Verse number 48 of that chapter says, Thy sins are forgiven. Verse number 50 this is what Jesus said, Thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. Now here are some more verses about peace. God promises peace to his people. Psalm 85, 8, I will hear what the Lord, what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. God gives peace to those whose minds are fixed on him. Isaiah 26, 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Peace is the result of being controlled by the Spirit. We find that in Romans 8, chapter 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Peace is one of the nine qualities produced by the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. There is no peace for the wicked. Isaiah 57, 21. There is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. Now my question to you is, have you come to the Lord's call for salvation? Do you have peace with God? 
Have you taken up his yoke upon you? Do you have peace of God? Or do you have no peace? That is a question for you today, for you to answer. The Bible is clear that this call of salvation given here in chapter 11 of Matthew, verse 28, he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor. Sorry we got cut off there. Uh, just wanted to go over that again. My question to you tonight is, have you come to Christ's call for salvation? Do you have that peace with God? Have you taken His yoke upon you? Do you have the peace of God? Or do you have no peace? You can come to Him today if you have no peace. Now, going back to Matthew chapter 11, as I said, the call for salvation, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That is a call for every individual. It's amazing how he went from condemning cities because they wouldn't repent seeing his works that he did, his great mighty works that he did, and now yet he, he gives every individual a call that they can be saved, the call of salvation. It's for everybody. Amen? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so that is a call for everyone. Now when we come to verse 29, this is a call for Christians. He says, Take my yoke upon you. That yoke means instruction under discipline. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Now here he's talking about us submitting to God, submitting to Christ, his will, his way, not ours. Now this, this burden that he talks about, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, that's when we are obedient to him and submit to him. That's when it's easy and light. The problem is many times, Christians, we have that yoke on us and we want to go in a different direction. We want to go our way instead of God's way. And we as God's children need to just submit to him, obey him. What does the word of God say? That's what I need to do. If we go against the word of God, we're going the wrong way. We have the spirit of God. He gave us the spirit of God when we got saved. I want you to go to the book of John John chapter number 15. John chapter number 15. In John chapter 15, uh, excuse me, John chapter 14, verse number 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then he says this, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Now you've got to remember, this is when he was in his earthly ministry, and he's talking about when he leaves, he's not going to leave them comfortless. He's going to give them another comforter. That means another of the same kind. And of course, he was God the Son, and he would be leaving us with God the Holy Spirit. Notice at that time he said he dwelleth with you, but then he says this, and shall be in you. And that's what happened is, now as a child of God, when a person is saved, amen, the Holy Spirit indwells in them and never leaves us nor forsakes us. He's with us all the time. Now we still sin because we still have a flesh, but the Spirit is trying to guide us in all truth. That's why when we read our Bibles, listen, when I was lost, I read my Bible, I didn't know anything. But now, because I have the Spirit of God in me, He can guide me into all truth. He can show me all truth. And so it's important that we understand that the Holy Spirit is given to us as, as He's our comforter now. And He's going to guide us in the right ways. He's going to guide us in all truth. And that's why we need to listen to the Spirit of God. Uh, when we are ready to do something, there's something in there telling us that's not right. That's conviction. That's the Holy Spirit convicting us. And so we as God's children, 
need to understand that it's listen, if we listen to the Spirit, the yoke is easy and the burden is light. And so it's important as a child of God that we listen to the Spirit of God. But for those that may be listening to me that have never been saved, they've they've never trusted Christ their Savior, this can be done now. You can do it now. All you have to do is admit the first part, admit you're a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then secondly, we need to understand that Christ came and died for our sins. Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then we have to confess, amen, to him, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, I know you came and died for my sins, and I'm putting my faith and trust in you. Romans 10 tells us that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So if you come to him and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, I know that you died for me. And that third day, God the Father rose you up from the dead. He resurrected you. That proved that he was satisfied with that sacrifice. And Lord, I'm not putting my faith in my membership church membership i'm not putting it in baptism i'm not putting it in good works i'm just trusting you 100 percent. that's the only way you can be saved jesus said i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me you can do that tonight you can pray to him and say lord i know i'm a sinner lord i'm trusting you as my savior and he will as that bible says thou shalt be saved he will save you well it's wonderful having you on tonight And I ask for uh, those of the church, uh, just keep praying. Hopefully uh, it won't be long. We'll be able to get back in the building. It would be nice if we could get there by Easter, but uh, that's in the Lord's hands. We're just going to trust him and just uh, pray for our country, pray for our nation. They certainly need it. And uh, I just ask you to just remember all the churches around this country. This is a time. This is an opportunity Listen, when everybody's hurting, when everybody's wondering what's going on, this is a time that we can tell them, hey, we have peace. Amen. There's people, they have fear. They're full of it right now because of this virus. But I have peace in my heart because Christ saved me and he can save you. God bless you and we'll see you next Wednesday night. We'll have our service Wednesday night, 7 o'clock Central Time.